The eustachian tube is a connection between the middle part of the ear and the back of the nose, an area called the nasopharynx. The eustachian tube helps to equalise the pressure in the area behind the eardrum, the middle ear. The middle ear normally contains air, and if the pressure reduces, a negative pressure develops. Most people have experienced this when we're on a plane, as the plane is descending. Unfortunately, some people continue to have symptoms even when they're not flying. The main symptoms that people get are a block sensation inside the ear, a feeling like you're underwater. Some people also describe popping and crackling sounds, which are worse when they have a cold or sinusitis, or if they're changing altitude. Many people will describe poor hearing and sometimes feeling imbalanced. Occasionally, individuals also experience symptoms such as tinnitus. The main way of diagnosing eustachian tube dysfunction is by taking a thorough history. There is no 100% diagnostic perfect test, but other tests such as a hearing test or a pressure test called a tympanogram can be very useful. In addition, we sometimes perform a flexible nasal endoscopy. That's an endoscopic examination of the back of the nose to look at the opening of the eustachian tube to see if there are any problems. The main treatments that have been used in the past for eustachian tube dysfunction have included simple treatments such as steam inhalations, saline nasal douching, or steroid nasal sprays or drops. More recently, devices such as the Otovent balloon or the ear popper have also been introduced. These are devices which help force air up the eustachian tube to help equalise the pressure inside the middle ear. Surgery has also been used for eustachian tube dysfunction. In the past, the main treatment was a grommet insertion. A grommet is a little plastic tube which is inserted directly through the eardrum to allow the ear pressure to be equalised at all times. Unfortunately, some individuals who have grommets do experience some difficulties. For some people, it can make the symptoms worse, and also it puts the individual at risk of infections, particularly when the ear gets wet. The most recent development in terms of surgery is a technique called eustachian tube balloon dilatation. This is a very short, simple procedure performed under a local anaesthetic or a short general anaesthetic. It involves an endoscopic approach to the nose as a day case procedure in which the, a small balloon catheter is fed up the eustachian tube and inflated for a two minute period. This is performed on each side. The results of this particular procedure are reasonably good with about 70% of people reporting improvements following the procedure.